You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit GVOL.io. That's G V O L.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. Everybody, that music means it is time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we step a little bit outside our comfort zone. We look a little bit farther afield, see what's going on in the world of crypto. We're going to talk the Bitcoin, the ETH, the altcoin. We're going to talk the spot, the futures, the options, the skew, the volatility, and a whole bunch more. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-compelling network upon which so many of you are binging these days. We don't mind. Binge away. All we ask if you're on the on-demand side and you haven't listened or subscribed to the full network, first off, make sure you're doing that. You're missing out on a whole bunch of great content out there, usually a couple of shows hitting you a day. If you like what you hear on the on-demand side, keep it rating and reviewing. It does help the new folks continue to discover the legion of content that we are putting out out there. And, of course, if you want more content in your lives, we got you covered here on the old network. A couple of shows coming at you exclusive to our pro members as well as live access going exclusively to our pro members. This show, every other show we do here on the network as well as great giveaways exclusive to our pro members. Where do you go to get all that exclusivity and a whole bunch more? Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to begin your journey to the dark side. Join us on the dark side. You'll never know the power of the dark side until you sign up. It's pretty fun. So check it out for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. We also have slash secret club. Maybe we should add slash dark side. That'd be pretty cool, too. (laughs) All right. Meanwhile, it's time to kick things off with the Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody, let's do this thing. It is time once again for the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show 
where we do just that. We break down the action in the world's leading digital asset. No, I'm not talking about Shiba. Our chat might want us to uh, to think of Shiba as the number one <coughs> excuse me, digital asset out there. But nope, it is Bitcoin. And it's pretty much right around within spitting distance of where it was on our show last week, listeners. Uh, this time last show, it was 29,000. 20, excuse me, 29,000. That'd be nice. 21,933. Coming into today's show, 21,800. 86. So a little bit lighter, but in the grand scheme of Bitcoin, pretty much a rounding error. Talking a whopping 46 handles where it was this time last week. Uh, In between, we had a little bit more of a range. We got down to about 20, well, on our interim since our last show. The low was about uh, 22,000 this past Saturday, and uh, the high was 24,200. On Wednesday, of course, not counting our showtime, and we were below the 22,000 level, obviously, listeners. Uh, coming into the vol front here, kind of a whole heck of a lot of shoulder shrugging on the vol space, listeners. By the way, all these analysts coming at you, courtesy of our friends over there at Genesis Volatility. Gvol.io is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. If you did that, you would see that on our last show, we had about a 73 and a quarter. Talking the average at the money vol there on Bitcoin across the term structure. And today's show, it's a whopping 74. So not a heck of a lot of change on the vol side, which can be interpreted as maybe vol remaining pretty firm because, you know, Bitcoin vol tends to, when things aren't really happening, it tends to implode. So the fact that it didn't implode maybe is kind of interesting and telling in and of itself. Uh, Bit vol kind of holding up as well. On our last show, it was 82 and a half. This show, 8130, of course, BitVault, our friend Simon Ho's 30-day rolling, effectively Bitcoin VIX out there. And of course, let's get into the skew on our last show. We saw the skew had lightened up. It had been very markedly negative for the better part of the last month or two. It was only negative two on our last show. It had come up quite a bit. And it's still about that level this week. It's about a negative 1.8. So right around that same level, still negative, but only slightly so. Certainly not much compared to where it has been over the last couple of months, uh, the bit skew, Simon's bit skew. So he measures that kind of skew change and he encapsulates it in one number. And our last show was a 95. This show was about an 89. So the, sh- the skew lightening up a little bit there as well. In terms of OI, things aren't lightening up. They're getting a little bit heavier. Not much, but a little bit. On the call front out there on Deribit, which is still the big dog when it comes to Overall crypto volume, we had the calls at about 147,500 contracts, up about 13,000 contracts from this time last week. The puts 86,300 contracts opens up about 3,300 from this time last week. July coming up against it, but still got another week in it or so on the show. And uh, July still leading the dance right now with 77,000 contracts open. That's up 9,000 contracts from this time last week. Uh, but it ain't a heck of a lot when you talk about the the gains we've seen in well let's we'll talk about those in a sec we'll get to December in a second uh, September fifty six thousand contracts so it's starting to close in on July obviously not quite there yet won't catch it before July goes off the board uh, so we'll see September leading the dance for a little bit unless December can keep up this pace September this week up one thousand contracts fifty six thousand then December. It's 49,000 contracts, so hot on the heels of September. Excuse me, December up 11,000 contracts this week. So that's a, that's a big jump out here in December. We're seeing a lot of action in December across the board. We'll get to it a little bit later in ETH as well. In terms of action, in terms of positions, what are the size positions that are open in Bitcoin options right now? Well, let's find out, listeners. Number five is the 40,000 strike that has 10,100 contracts open. It's up about 2,600 from this time last week, followed by number four, the 15,000 strike that has 9,000 contracts open. That's unchanged from last week. Number three, the 20,000 strike. So we're, we've started off pretty optimistic, then we jump back down to 15K. Now we're getting a little bit, pretty much right around the at the money level right now, quite frankly. That's got 11,500 contracts open. That's down 500. Then we're jumping up again, a little bit more optimistic to the 30K strike for number two, that has 14,200 contracts open. That's up 900 from this time last week. And then number one with the bullet, 25,000 strike yet again, has 17,600 contracts open. It's up a whopping 600 from this time last week. It's not a lot of, outside of the 40K strike, (laughs) not not huge swings in the OI this week. Uh, But we had a pretty active week 
all things considered. And we are in July, not known for being a rock'em, sock'em robots, period. Uh, we saw the biggest day, the busiest day since our last show, the July 19th trading session, 19,900 contracts going up. On the 20th, right, the day after, we saw 19,300. So not world-beating numbers, but steady, steady, heavy volume. That goes back to the 12th. The 12th, we saw 19,600 contracts. So it's been pretty steady over the last couple of weeks. You got to go all the way back to July, excuse me, June 13th to really see the, the big dog day. That was 54,400 contracts. Nothing, obviously, reaching that, but steady paper for most of this past week, which is kind of interesting out there. Let's see if we saw steady paper on the CME front. Uh, CME, the big dog, Bitcoin options. We saw a whopping 49 going up on Friday. That's not a lot. It's light compared to what we've seen of late. But historically, that's actually a decent amount for the Bitcoin options, which never have really set the world on fire. The big 5X multiplier contracts. In terms of OI, we saw that tick up a little bit. It's up to about 4,133. It's up about 600 contracts from where it was this time last week. So a few signs of life out there. Uh, the Bitcoin futures, the big dogs on the Bitcoin futures front, you know, same kind of story out there. We saw decent paper, but nothing blowing the doors off. The About 8,000 going up on Friday and the OI ticking up a whopping 100 contracts to 13,800. Actually kind of surprisingly quiet on the micro Bitcoin futures front on last week. We saw 9,100 contracts going up on Friday. Uh, The OI ticking up a little bit, about 2,000 contracts to about 22,000. All in all, kind of a quiet week on the CME front, at least from the Bitcoin side. We'll see if we can get more action in ETH when we head on into the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, let's dive in and explore the altcoin universe. Let's start, as we always do, breaking down the top 10 from a market cap perspective. Number 10, still our old friend, the Doge, just keeping the death grip. On the number 10 spot there, $8.6 billion worth of market cap. So that's pretty much right at a similar level to what it was this time last week. Number nine, we got Solana, $13.3 billion worth of market cap. Number eight, Cardano, $16.5 billion. Number seven, XRP, about $16.6 billion. So Cardano and XRP hanging out neck and neck. Number six, Binance USD, $17.9 billion. Number five, BNB, $41 billion. So again, we have that massive jump from six to five. Remains the case again this week, listeners. Number four, USD coin, 55 billion. Number three, Tether, 65.8 billion. Numero due, our old friend ETH, 184 and a half billion. And number one, the big dog, 417 billion for Bitcoin. In terms of action for the number two out there for market cap, even though number one, a lot of your hearts, it's ETH. Looking a little bit, a little bit rosier, a little bit brighter this week than last week. Not much. It was about 1482 on our last show, 1517 when we kicked off the show today. So 34, almost 35 handles to the upside. Uh, in terms of lows, we didn't get much lower than that ever since our last show, actually. It got down to about 1475. We got higher, though, it got up to about 1638. So we had a little bit of a range there. Uh, so ETH managing to hold on to these levels here, which is kind of interesting. In terms of vol, we're seeing the vol remaining pretty firm. On the ETH front, it was a 98.6 on our last show, a 99.5 this show. So inhaling a little bit this week, but still hanging out, flirting with that triple digit level, which again, we had a decent range this week. So not entirely unexpected. Uh, Skew wise, we have seen a bit of a change, which is kind of interesting. Last show was positive 2.1. So we had swung into the positive and only lasted a week. Listeners now back down to negative two and a half. Not extremely bearish or extremely negative, but just just a touch. So that's kind of interesting. In terms of OI, we did see some action this week on the ETH front. Uh, the calls are jumping up quite a bit. Uh, 2.61 million calls open on Deribit this week. That's up 360,000 from this time last. That's a huge jump. We'll get into a little bit of what was driving that a little bit later here. Uh, the puts, 850,000 puts open on Deribit. That's up 68,000. So still we're Pretty much hanging out at about three to one calls over puts out there right now, listeners, which is uh, pretty aggressive. Usually you're seeing two to one for a lot of these names, but ETH's been hanging out around three to one for a while. And this past week, just exacerbating the lead for the calls. Speaking of this past week, it was a pretty active week for ETH options this week as well. 
Uh, the busiest day was 213,000 contracts. That was on July 21st. I uh, followed right behind it, July 19th, 209,000. So pretty active. Uh, if you go back to the day before our last show, the Sunday of our previous week, our previous show there, uh, 17th, 381,000 contracts wound up on that day. So that was a, a pretty active day. You got all the way back to June 13th to find a day that beat it, and only by 10,000 contracts, 391,000 contracts. So. We're seeing some decent numbers again out here in ETH, which is a good sign that uh, maybe people are coming back to play. In terms of where those people are playing, let's look at the expiration cycle first. Uh, we've got uh, Deese taking up the number one spot. Deese leapfrogging all the way to the front of the line with 972,000 contracts. You're talking almost a million contracts open just in December. And that's huge. It's up 285,000 contracts. We'll get to why that is again in a little bit. A number two, September, 891,000 contracts. It's up a respectable 39,000, but it, it can't hold a candle to December. Then number three, we have July hanging out in the rearview mirror with 705,000 contracts. It's trying. It's fighting the good fight. 103,000 contracts it added this week to, from an OI perspective, but it's not going to catch D's before it goes the way of the dodo, especially if D's keeps putting up weeks like this. Uh, what the heck was trading out here this week? Let's find out. Let's go out to the size positions, and I think you'll see uh, pretty quickly what's going on out here. Number five, we have the 3,500 strike with 175, excuse me, 176,000 contracts. That's up 43,500. That's nothing to sneeze at there. Uh, number five, we have the 5,000 strike, 165,000 contracts. That's actually down 7,000. Number four, we have the 2,500 strike, 179,000 contracts open there. That's a newcomer to our top five. Number two, we have the 4,000 strike with 187,000 contracts. That's up about 5,000. That's not going to really move the needle. So the number one strike, though, the 3,000 strike, now has 276,000 contracts on it. That is a newcomer to our top five and a huge jump. And that, when you look at the big jump in Dece and the big jump in the 3,000 strikes, I was doing some cursory scans right before the show started. The Dece 3,000s were where the action was this week. Listen, people buying 200 lots, 500 lots, more here or there. Uh, that, the OI swung by about 130,000 contracts over the past week. So a lot of people piling in to the December 3,000s in ETH right now. And it seems like the lion's share of those we're buying them. I mean, obviously, we didn't have a chance to look at every single trade, but uh, a lot of the ones we saw, the sizable ones coming across our tape, were opening buys. So uh, intriguing stuff. What are your thoughts there, listeners? Is, is this it? Is this the nader? Have you already seen the nader for Crypto Winter 2.0 or 3.0, whatever phase we're in here? Have we already? Has the warm already turned? Are we rally at 3,000? By December, you think we'll be there? I mean, we were there not too long ago, so I guess from that perspective, it isn't that far away. Uh, but still, that's quite a pop. Are you some of the folks who are loading up on these December 3000s, adding over 100,000 in OI just in the past week? Uh, hit us up. Let us know. I'm, I'm very intrigued about your thoughts about these. I want to do a little bit more digging after the show. Maybe we'll have a little bit more in terms of what was going on with these over the course, uh, maybe on our next show, maybe even throughout the week of some of our other content, because that is fascinating to me to see so many 100-plus thousand contracts of new positioning on the December 3,000s. That's interesting. Obviously, 3,500 is going up 43,000 times as well, so I want to look there as well, see if there was some, some ratio trading, but still, uh, intriguing stuff, <coughs> excuse me, on the DC 3,000s. Oh, listen, let's see if the CME ETH contracts can keep up, and the answer, eh, they did decent paper. Man, these are big Big multiplier futures, listeners. 7,800 contracts going up on Friday. That's nothing to sneeze at out there, even though the OI is down about 100 to 3,800 contracts. Let's go out to Microland. Let's see if you folks are hanging out there this week. Micro ETH futures. Uh, the OI is ticking in the right direction. It's up about 5,000 to 45,000. So decent gain there. We saw about 25,600 of the micro ETH futures going up last Friday. So again, nothing to sneeze at, but uh, that big jump in the D's 3,000s, that's... That's fascinating. That beer is a little bit more scrutiny out there, listeners. Let's go out to some of the other altcoin and let's kick things off with our old friend XRP. 
Uh, let's see, 34.5 cents on today's show, 35.8 cents, so we're down about 1.2 cents, almost 1.3 cents from where we were this time last week. Good old Doge, last show, 0.66, this week, 0.64, so down about 0.0017. Litecoin, 56.96 last week, 56 and a quarter this week, so down about 0.7. Uh, Cardano, 47.9 last week, 48.9 this week, so up a whopping one cent. Polkadot, 7.02. Today, 738. Last week's were down 36 cents. Solana, 3840. This show, 4046. Down about two bucks. And the old Sheeb was 0.00012 last week, 0.00011 this week. Before we roll out of here, listeners, let's get on into a little bit of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right here, listeners, let's get into some of the questions. Looking at our chat, our chat going back and forth about uh, about Sheep <laughs> by Sheba, uh, the ground floor of Sheba Inu there, Unlimited and Queen going at it. Uh, he's saying he'll get into Doge if it gets under a penny. <laughs> sure, why not? It's still hanging out at the 10 spot on our top 10 market cap. So some folks are still piling into Doge. Other folks saying they only feel safe in Bitcoin and ETH. Yeah, I could see that there, uh, Queen, as well. Uh, other chat folks saying uh, they agree with Uncle Mike that uh, <laughs> comes to crypto. They don't actually like it, but they'll go with some of the leading ones. Some folks saying they, they're going to go with one. It's Bitcoin. I could see that. I've always been a little bit more of an ETH guy myself. It seems like Bitcoin is going to maybe lead the charge, suffer the slings and arrows of regulation, then maybe ETH will kind of... Uh, you know, the much ballyhooed flippening will we see it. Some other folks, obviously, leaping on the Solana train, saying Solana has the future. Uh, either way, intriguing stuff afoot out here. Speaking of intriguing stuff, let's get to the question we asked you folks last week on the show. Uh, we said, we've seen a nice pop in equities and crypto over the past week. Are you buying back in at these levels, or is there still more blood to come? It was a fascinating back and forth, but at the end of the day, you folks... Feeling bloody. Uh, 62.3% of you saying there is more blood to come. It was always hanging around around the 40-odd, got it up to 50-odd percent. But in the end, you folks really just piled into there's more blood coming, driving it over 60%. So a strong majority of you folks saying there's more blood to come. Uh, then we had number two was you're buying equities here at 16.4%. Number three, you're buying both here, so buying equities and crypto, 13.1%. Only 8.2% of you are saying you're buying crypto here. So kind of interesting, kind of contrasts with all that paper going up on the DS 3000 strike in ETH. That is very interesting. I really want to dive even more into that. Maybe we'll get into it a little bit later this week. Certainly on the show next week. Also, reach out to Greg and the team over there at Genesis, see if they have any interesting thoughts on that uh, DS 3000 strike. Because a lot of paper flocking in to the upside in ETH is certainly worthy of note. And unfortunately, that's going to do it for us here on the Crypto Rundown this week, uh, back in the Chicago studio next week. So things should sound uh, back to normal for you folks out there. Remember, if you have questions, comments, you know where to find us at options on most of the major social media platforms. Questions at theoptionsinsider.com also works. Of course, if you're in the live, you can hit us up there live or at your exclusive members hotline. You always get bumped to the top of the list. We love you folks out there. Uh, we're going to be moving our pro Q&A from Tuesday to Friday this week because I'll be doing a little bit of traveling. I am still down here in the Southern studio after all listeners. Uh, we'll be back with Boot Camp live earlier than usual, I believe, on Wednesday. Then our regular double dose of shows on Thursday, Twifo. And the option block. And then Friday, you've got your palooza of content. Vol views at noon. You've got options oddities after that. Then after that, back to back. Got a pro Q&A. So buckle in for a crazy Friday. And then back again next Monday, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL home of institutional grade crypto options analytics whether you're trading cfi options or DeFi options cryptocurrencies move use gvol analytics to analyze implied volatility model realized volatility structure positions and unlock alpha for more information visit gvol.io 
That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 